Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by parkbenchtutors.com. We're going to continue with our podcast on business studies and on ratios and today we're going to look at efficiency ratios. How do we measure efficiency? There are three easy methods to determine efficiency. They relate to whether we are getting our money quickly enough whether we are paying our creditors in a suitable manner and the other one is whether our inventory is being moved quickly enough in other words are we selling enough quickly now, there are other measures but these are the three that we will concentrate on for business studies so getting our money the first one the account that we need to watch is obviously the receivables account trade receivables or what used to be known as the debtors account. How long is it before we get paid? Now, if we were a supermarket and all our sales were cash sales, then we wouldn't be making this calculation. But most businesses, in fact, don't operate on a cash-only basis. Most businesses will, in fact, operate with credit sales. So, let's look at the payment period. We take the accounts receivable divide by the annual credit sales and we multiply by 365 and the answer will be in days and it will represent the average length of time for getting money from credit sales I would say that in our examples that follow we are going to assume that all the sales are in fact credit sales this is for ease of demonstrating the calculations and ratios to you so here's some first thoughts if we give all our customers 30 days net as their terms in other words we expect to be paid within 30 days then what we would hope for the ratio is that we're going to have a figure that is inside 30 days if the figure were outside 30 days in other words if it was 38 days or 48 days then that could indicate a problem it would mean that all our customers or many of our customers were paying late now if we were offering settlement discounts then we would expect to be well inside 30 days why because the whole idea of a settlement discount is to try and get our customers to pay early where do we get the information to make these calculations well the figures for accounts receivable that figure we will find on the statement of financial position on the balance sheet and the sales figures we're going to find on the income statement so you will need both the statement of financial position and the income statement for dealing with ratios okay let's look at the balance sheet and the income statement for sweet dreams and we can identify because I've highlighted them here the figure for receivables or debtors is 18,500 and the figure for sales which is 236,000 so those are the figures we will use to determine our first ratio right so the period here accounts receivable times 365 over annual credit sales is 18,500 over 236,000 multiplied by 365 comes to 26.61 or 27 days if we would take it to the nearest day those then would seem just about reasonable if the terms we're offering are 30 days net it looks as if all our customers or certainly the vast majority of our customers are probably paying just within that 30 days period but we might perhaps still be asking ourselves well are we offering early settlement discounts and if not would these help now let's look at the creditor payments in other words how we are paying people if we pay everyone too quickly then essentially we're using cash that could be paid could be used in perhaps some other way however there may be a reason for paying uh, our people quickly it might be because we're getting good value on settlement discounts on the other hand if we pay our creditors too slowly then we might find they suddenly start offering us rather less favorable terms for the future so the creditors payment period accounts payable times 365 divided by the purchases made during the year 
We can get the accounts payable information from the statement of financial position and we can get the information for purchases from the income statement. So here we have the balance sheet for Sweet Dreams and the income statement for Sweet Dreams. So the payables figure, trade payables, is 8,800 and the purchases figure that we're after is 110,000. Our credit is payment period, accounts payable divided by purchases made during the year times 365. So 8,800 times 365 over 110,000, 29.2, so 29 days to the nearest day. So what this suggests is we are basically paying those to whom we own money probably at about the last possible day or almost the last possible day. If they are all if that's the average then we might sort of look and see whether there are in fact any payments that are being made late. We might also ask whether we're missing opportunities for settlement discounts. Now Sweet Dreams employ a new graduate in accounting and she makes a few suggestions to the company. She thinks that by offering more settlement discounts they should get their money in faster from their creditors and she also suggests that taking advantage of settlement discounts might help. So let's look at those trading figures two years later. Trade receivables 11,900 and sales of 275,000, trade payables 5,400, purchases 107,000. So we do those two calculations again and we find the receivables has fallen to 16 days and the creditors have fallen to 18 days. So both of these figures, these payment period figures, have fallen. So the business has reduced those quite effectively. So, was there any other evidence that the strategy had other benefits? Well, you might have noticed something had happened in the sales. There were, in fact, improved sales figures. 236,000 to 275,000 as improved sales figures. You might also notice for purchases that before we were paying 110,000, we're now paying 107,000. So we may be getting more favourable terms. There could be other explanations, but what we hope is that the early settlement discounts to customers increase sales, and that if we make payments early, then we might be getting more favourable terms. Now let's look at a contrasting situation with Asteroid Electrical, which are a store that's been experiencing a little bit of difficulty. We're going to look at their statement of financial position and their income statements. And from what we've learned in this podcast, you should be able to spot a few signs of difficulty. Trade receivables 36,000, sales 212,000. Trade payables 19,000, purchases 107,000. Hmm. Let's see what happens when we try and do those payables periods. The receivables payment. 61.9 days. It's taking 62 days to get money back from our customers. Creditors payment period 64.81 days. It's taking us almost 65 days to pay our creditors. I'm probably not too popular with our creditors if our terms of 30 days is net. We could in fact be paying interest on some of the money that's being owed there. You might also have noticed in the last case that there was a large increase in inventory. In other words, inventory is goods that remain unsold and that there's a relatively small amount of cash available. And this could be the first sign for administration. Of, in other words, administration may be just around the corner and we might be in for a fire sale. That ends our podcast on efficiency, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For further information, you can find parkbenchtutors.com on the internet, or you can look up Parkbench Tutors on Facebook. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you every success in your studies.